I'm here in Affinity Photo 1.1 and there are six settings that I like to change every time I open the program. These are settings that reset themselves every time the program closes. So if anyone watching knows how to make these settings stay the same every time I close and reopen the program, please let me know in the comments below. This is an image from the stunning hills of Halifax, my hometown in Yorkshire, England. And we'll start by trying to resize the canvas. Maybe we want this picture ever so slightly wider. Right now, if I go to document, resize canvas, I have the canvas size in pixels. And that's not intuitive to me because I want to be getting this ready for a print. So in this case, I need to go to the view tool. And when you're in the view tool, you get to choose the document units. In this case, it's pixels. And it's always pixels when Affinity Photo opens. And I'm going to change that to inches. Now that it's in inches, we can go back to document resize canvas and we can change that to be just a, a little bit wider. Let's say nine and a half inches wide. Perfect. So that was our first setting change. Now let's try and extend one side of the image to fit the frame. I'll try and use the clone brush for that. I'll click on the clone brush. I'll make a new layer just so that I don't change the background layer. I'll call that clone. And then we will press Alt to pick a little piece of the image. And as we try and paint it over, nothing happens. Because in this case, we need to pick a source that is not only the blank layer we're on, but what's underneath. So we need to pick the current layer and below. This will reset itself every time you close Affinity Photo. So we need to repick it every time. And now when we go in, we can pick a little piece of the picture and extend it over to the left to fill in that entire side of the image. And there it is. Then we can pick the healing brush and perhaps there are slight blemishes on here that we'd like to cover up. And again, we'll press Alt to select some pixels that we wanna to use to cover the blemish up. And again, nothing happens because even for this tool, that source layer has reset to current layer and below. For the rest of the time while the program's open, it will stay like this. But again, when we close and reopen the program, it will default to current layer. So now we can go in and we can cover up our blemishes or we can erase some century old Victorian stonework. But obviously I don't want to do that. So I'm going to undo. We've still got that gap down the right hand side. I could use the clone stamp again to fill that in, but in this case, I'm going to use the liquify tool. When the liquify tool turns on, we've got this blue grid over the entire image. And I find that a little bit strong because I can't really see behind it, especially on an image like this, where there's a lot of blue in the center and in the sky. So the first thing I do every time I use the liquify tool is reduce the opacity of that grid to something like that. And now I can still see the grid being warped, but it's less distracting as I'm working. That opacity will reset itself every time Affinity Photo is opened. Then let's have some fun and add some text. Let's pretend this is going to be the cover of a magazine article perhaps. And the first time we open the text tool and type something in, we're going to get black text in Arial font. And like a lot of you out there, I have a preferred font that I use pretty much every time. In this case, that font is Montserrat. And I also have a orange color that I use for the majority of my graphic design. And when we click on the font color, Affinity Photo automatically brings us into the RGB sliders. And I'm not exactly sure what RGB the color orange I'm after is, but I do know what HSL parameters to give it. And again, it's RGB that opens by default every time Affinity Photo opens. But if it stayed on HSL every time, I'd be so happy. I need a hue of 29, a saturation of 100, and a luminance of 50 to get the color that I want. And I'm happy with that. Perhaps with the lettering, it might be nice to fade it in the hills and a little bit behind the clouds. 
and we can move that around until Studley Pike, this monument in Todmorden near Halifax, is just framed in that letter H, and that looks pretty good. So every time we've come into Affinity, we've changed the units, we've changed the source for the healing brush and the clone tool to current layer and below. We've changed the liquify grid opacity and we've changed the text font and color. It'd be awesome if these things just stayed the same each time. But as long as I remember to do those things every time I open Affinity Photo, I'm good to go for the rest of the session. If you have any parameters that you change the minute you open Affinity Photo, please let me know in the comments below. And if you have any tips to solve on how to get these defaults to stay in memory for the next time it opens, that would save a tremendous amount of time.